Hello and welcome to a new video. Uh, today we're going to take a quick look at Game Master 5. Uh, Game Master 5 is the DM companion to Fight Club 5 from Lion's Den. Now Game Master 5 is designed to help DMs manage their campaigns, adventures, uh, and encounters. Um, here I'm using Game Master 5 on an iPad uh, for iOS. Uh, and this is also available uh, for uh, Android, and they also make Game Master for uh, 3.5 edition D&D and Pathfinder. Now, in my Game Master, I've currently got a uh, campaign I'm running, uh, a Taldori campaign, and I've also got uh, the adventure for Lost Mine of Fandelver added uh, and we're going to look at that one because it's a little bit more complete uh, and can kind of show more of the features. Uh, before I do, though, I just want to show real quick, uh, in the main menu, we have the compendium. Now, the compendium is essentially your rule book. Now, Game Master 5 ships with the open SRD. That's the system reference document that contains the freely available content that Wizards makes available. Uh, it's very limited. There isn't a whole lot of monsters and spells and things like that. Um, but it is more than enough to play the game. Uh, eventually I'll do a video on how to make your own custom compendium, uh, like I use here, where you can add uh, different items from uh, other content. Uh, in this case I have pretty much content from all of the books that I have, and it's um, a pretty good amount. So things like the equipment, the spells, uh, the various monsters are all in here. It's kind of like an encyclopedia uh, a D&D encyclopedia built into the app uh, and it's a great feature to have and like I said eventually I will do a uh, video on how to customize the uh, compendium to suit your taste uh, but uh, that'll be a little ways off um, you can also create a new campaign uh, I'll go into that in another video uh, and you can also manage combat encounters uh, they have basically the ability to do um, similar to say a Cobalt Fight Club initiative tracker, um, I'll get into that again in another video. Uh, here I just want to show you the, the quick hit features. Um, so I'm going to go into the Lost Mine of Fandelver and just briefly explain uh, the three columns you see here. I have my adventures and encounters that are preloaded uh, that I created and set up. Uh, my player characters, NPCs, uh, and treasure that are um, in the center and then I have various notes that I've created uh, to so that I don't have to flip back and forth between um, the adventure notes and the app so in Game Master 5 things are organized uh, with they'll use the term campaign right now I'm on the campaign screen a campaign may also have adventures and there isn't much different between a campaign and an adventure in Game Master 5 as far as functionality, uh, but what is important to note is, for instance, I have my non-player characters at the campaign level. These are your big characters that uh, might cross adventures, and then I can have NPCs that are specific to a uh, particular campaign uh, so that I don't necessarily clutter up that home screen. You can see here, like, all the NPCs that are in Phandalin uh, are all listed there, and then I have my campaign NPCs, uh, which are characters that may cross over, and then I have my player characters. Now what's important to note here, uh, I just want to show you real quick, is my player characters uh, come from Fight Club 5. Uh, all of my players in this game uh, and in the other campaign use Fight Club 5, and you can export a character uh, in a Game Master 5 format, and they can, you know, anytime they level up or make big changes to their character, they can export that file, text it, or airdrop it to my iPad, uh, and then I can load it in and overwrite their old character so that I always have the latest uh, information for their character. It's really great uh, when I want to know what their passive perception is without having to tip my hand uh, and ask them for it. Uh, and again, it does something similar to the NPCs. Now, the pictures are things I found on the Internet. They're um, not required. I just like having a picture for every NPC just so that I can kind of... Um, come up with a physical description and a reminder for that character that I come back to, you know, days later. The um, notes on the side, I'll, I'll get to encounters in a moment, but the notes on the side, these are very basic uh, text notes. 
Uh, so if I go to say, um, I have a naming scheme here, and there's a reason for that that I'll get into in another video, but uh, basically it's because you can see notes across campaigns. Um, it's nice to know which campaign a particular note belongs to. So if I go to say the um, Lost Mine of Fandelver Red Brand Hideout is what that stands for, uh, and the barracks, I've created basically, or just copied the text for the various rooms so that I can easily go back and forth. And you'll notice with my naming scheme, I, I named my encounters the same. And it's just so that I can keep things uh, straight. Obviously, you can call them whatever you want. Um, but these are nice little features where you can actually go and um, put in quite a bit of information. You can type it in, you can copy and paste it if you have it, uh, your source in an electronic format. Um, and it really is just a nice feature so that you don't have to constantly keep switching between apps. Um, another interesting thing is you can attach images and sometimes it doesn't load as quickly you see it there now and I can actually have the map loaded. Now it's important to note that this map gets loaded in my campaign file um, so it does take up additional storage than if it was on the, the photo app. So um, Honestly, you can load it in as a note, or you can keep it in photos and switch between it, uh, whatever you prefer. Um, but it's a nice feature to have. And, um, all right, so let's go to uh, encounters. So in here, you can have, again, you can have campaign level encounters, as I've created all my random encounters uh, that are included with the adventure. Uh, so these, because they can apply just about anywhere, I put them at this level. Whereas if I go back to, say, Goblin Arrows, you'll see I have the various encounters that are in the actual adventure. Um, so if I go to, say, the kennel, I see my three wolves there. Now, you will notice in this encounter my player characters aren't here. Uh, the reason is because I created the adventure without player characters in it because I didn't know who was going to be playing yet. And now I have to go back, and when I do go to run this, I have to go to Add Combatant. I can go to characters and I could say add Erlen and I could add my mirror and now I have my player characters in the encounter and you'll see that I have the stats and information for all of the various creatures here um, and I'm not going to run through a combat scenario right now um, but we'll do that in another video because that's a very important feature uh, here. I'm going to remove them just because I'm not done with getting the players set up. Um, I want to go back. Was it this one? No, that was the just archive. Um, so yeah, again, if I have encounters that are no longer needed, I can go and I can remove them by just hitting the red uh, icon on the left, uh, which is great for after a battle has been done. I can remove it. Uh, it doesn't delete it. It just hides it. So that's great to have um, so that I can go back and reference it later or if I need to return it or whatnot. Um, a couple other things I want to touch on real quick. One is the built-in dice roller. Uh, it's not something I care to use. We prefer to roll real dice, uh, but it's nice to have as well. Uh, there it is. So I can immediately roll, you know, slide hand checks for a character or an NPC. Uh, it's a nice feature to have because I have used it occasionally if I really wanted to do a secret roll um, and keep them guessing as to what's going on. Um, but I don't use it very often. Pretty rare, actually. The uh, last couple features I want to touch on real quick is, again, we have the dice calculator. Uh, again, nice feature if that's something that you want to use. Um, there's another link to the compendium, so if I want to look up something that isn't necessarily loaded uh, in here. There's also a rules quick reference sheet that comes uh, with the app. I didn't have to do this myself. And it just gives you kind of the same types of things you would find on most DM screens. Nice feature. Uh, you can customize this. I haven't done it yet, but I have some things that I plan to put on here. And then um, if I go to the menu on the right, I have a number of different things. One, I can do my uh, rests, so I can 
signify a long rest and that'll reset uh, any number of things for NPCs, etc. Uh, I can import, this is where I can go and I can import characters, uh, notes, if I've done notes and I can do them on a file and then import those. Uh, I can import pre-done campaigns. Uh, so there's quite a bit that can be done there. Uh, share, I can send this whole campaign, all of the information to another device. So if I have it on my iPhone, um, I can do that as well. And then I have links again back to the roll, uh, the dice roller, the compendium, the rules reference, and that options menu uh, you saw briefly at the beginning uh, where there's just various settings. I can back up to iCloud, uh, which I strongly recommend. Um, and that is pretty much all I wanted to show you uh, in this quick overview. Uh, my overview for Fight Club 5 was much too long. Uh, so this one I want to kind of keep it tight, smaller, and just kind of go through the highlights. We'll dive into a lot of the more advanced features like the initiative tracker, uh, creating a campaign, uh, import export of character files, things like that. Uh, all pretty straightforward uh, and I think you'll find them useful. So uh, if you would like to subscribe so that you know when those come up, that would be great. Uh, feel free to drop me a comment if you have any questions or anything specific you would like to see with the app. Uh, I'm still learning it myself, but I think I'm getting pretty good at it. Uh, and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you might have. Uh, so again, thank you for watching, and I will see you soon.